Hi, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of cocaine and its effects on the heart. Now, a lot of people have written to me and they said, you know, cocaine is um, a big problem, uh, cocaine use, uh, and can you do a video on what it can do to the heart? So here it is. The first thing to say is that cocaine is purported to be the most potent stimulant of natural origin, and it's extracted from the leaves of the coca plant, which is indigenous to the Indian highlands in South America. It is highly addictive, and once it's taken, once someone uses it, it creates an almost irresistible craving for the user to use it again. Despite the ecstasy and euphoria it gives, it never gives a feeling of complete satisfaction. And that is why people have to go back to it. Pure cocaine was first isolated in the 1880s, and it was actually used as an anesthetic, a local anesthetic. And the reason it would gain popularity as a local anesthetic was firstly because it numbed pain, it blocked the pain signals to the brain. But secondly, it's a very potent vasoconstrictor. It constricts all our blood vessels, and therefore if you were doing an operation or uh, anything like that, then there was a lot less bleeding because all the blood vessels would constrict. And that made it a popular choice for an anesthetic. In the 70s, 1970s, it started gaining popularity as a recreational drug. Cocaine is well absorbed following contact. It can be taken in orally, it can be taken in nasally, uh, it can be taken rectally, vaginally, and it can also be inhaled within the lungs. Because of its vasoconstrictive properties, it can take longer. So you can take it, but it takes a lot longer to reach peak doses in the bloodstream or in the body because of the vasoconstriction and the fact that it tightens up the blood vessel so it doesn't go in all at once. It can go in slowly over a period of time. When you smoke it, about 90% gets into your system. When you take it intranasally, about 80% of it gets into your system. The big thing with cocaine is that the way it works is the main effect it has is it increases our flight or fright responses, it increases our sympathetic activity, and it increases the amount of adrenaline we have in our body, noradrenaline we have in our body, but it also increases the amount of dopamine and serotonin that we have in our body. And the dopamine and serotonin are the things that sort of make people feel euphoric, but the adrenaline, the noradrenaline gives them that rush. Now, the problem with this is that when you take adrenaline and noradrenaline, one of the things that does is it increases our heart rate. So our heart rate goes up and our blood pressure goes up. But also because of this vasoconstrictive property of cocaine, our blood vessels tighten up. So our heart takes a double whammy because A, the heart is being expected to do a lot more, beat much faster, the pressure has gone up, the heart has to work much harder. But at the same time, by constricting the blood vessels, you're actually stopping the blood from getting through to the heart muscle to support this increased activity. And therefore, this is really, really bad news. It's almost like um, driving your car really fast and then choking the pipe that takes the fuel to the engine. So horrendous. The other thing that then does is that when you have that situation, blood isn't able to get through and the blood can then stagnate and blood clots can form, which make everything worse. So cocaine is terrible in the acute setting for the heart and the pressures it puts on the heart. It can do is it can interfere with our um, electrical channels within the heart, whether there's the sodium channels and the potassium channels, and it can also prolong this thing called the QT interval and therefore it can predispose patients to developing heart rhythm disturbances. So the very fact that the heart is already irritable, it's working harder, it's being stimulated, it's becoming more and more irritable because it's not getting the blood you're giving it, and you've got something that increases electric irritability even further, resulting in the very high risk of dangerous heart rhythm disturbances. And whilst, you know, when people are young, they think, okay, well, you know, they don't think of the future, the problem is, it's not just about that setting there and then. What we know from people who've used cocaine is that some of the effects of cocaine stay on for several years afterwards. We know that the cocaine, the blood vessels are taking such a hard beating, so to speak, that they start thickening, they start getting diseased, and you develop permanent damage uh, to the heart uh, vessels, to the blood vessels. That damage persists for the rest of the person's life. So it's not just a case of, oh, well, I only did it for one year. The fact is that you can have very long-lasting sequelae 
from using it irresponsibly at a, at, a, at a younger age. The other thing, of course, to say is that there have been studies which have shown that cocaine users have more muscular hearts, more fibrotic hearts than normal users. They're more prone to developing heart disease. They can develop heart rhythm disturbances, and the heart can go through irreversible changes as a use of this. So it's incredibly important to my mind for young people to know that, you know, using cocaine is not only just about that time when they're using it, but the sequelae can go on for several years. And therefore, wherever possible, it's a good idea to discourage people from using it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I hope you found this useful and I would be so grateful if you'd consider sharing it with anyone you think may benefit. Once again, thank you so much for all that you do for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the best.